Okay, fight fans from all over the Rio Grande Valley 956. We are here at offices of Mario Davila with Vicente Chente Garza, trainer of Esteban Ali Garza. Sir, how are you feeling today? I'm doing good. Feeling great. Sir, before we start talking a little bit about Esteban's career, how did you get involved in the sport of boxing? Oh, I started boxing um, at the age of 12, 13, around there. Um, it all started with Raul Cáceres, El Tigre Cáceres. We were in middle school. And he would go to school with his trophies, his medals, showing them all that he had just won this amateur fight in Corpus, San Antonio. He would travel with the Edinburgh Parks and Recs team, and he would bring his medals, his trophies into school, and he would show them off to his friends and stuff. As the, my brother was the first one that joined Tigre in his um, boxing team as amateur there at the Edinburgh Parks and Recs, and I followed the footsteps for, uh, for my brother. So I, jo I joined the amateur team there at the Edinburgh Parks and Recs with uh, with Tigre and Jerry under Sonny Rodriguez. Coach Sonny Rodriguez was her coach. So yeah, um, we did a, that's where I started my amateur career, my, my boxing career. Um, Tigre motiv motivated me more than anything to start my boxing career as an amateur. And that is true talk, I'm not lying. Um, Jerry, my big brother also, he's one of big motivator that, that, that uh, este, me inculcó el gimnasio, verdad? Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, Tigre y Gerardo fueron los, los que me inculcaron en el boxeo, and that's how I started my boxing career at the age of 12, 13 years old. Uh, Sonny, he's the one with the gorita, right? Yes, sir, that is Sonny. Gotcha, man, that gotcha. Is Sonny. Yes, sir. So, talk about your amateur career, man. How many fights did you have? In my amateur career, I did about close to 30 fights, maybe 35 fights, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, close to 40. At the time when I first was doing my um, first uh, amateur fights, Raul was already turning pro at that time. Raul was 16. Raul turned pro very young. Okay. I remember. So I remember when I was doing my first amateur fights, Raul was already heading into the pros. And he was helping me a lot in my sparrings already. So I had a good, pretty good amateur career. I, I won several Golden Gloves. I won several states. I inclusive went to the World Championships, Ringside World Championships in Kansas City, Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, I think that year was 2005. We broke the record for the most boxers attending in in a national tournament, in a world tournament. And there was like about 1,800 boxers at that time in that tournament. The six rings, there were six rings. And, and then after there. that, I decided to turn pro. Okay, let's talk about that. How many pro fights did you have? I only did two. Okay. I only had two professional fights. Um, unfortunately, um, when I went into my professional career, I was already um, hanging around with the back crowd. Okay. Yeah, if I could say the back crowd, um, I was, not doing boxing 100%, as you can say. I was hanging around with friends, going out, sleeping late, um, not doing the proper training, as you can say. So that, um, I my amateur career was great. I did a lot of outstanding things in my amateur career, and I had a lot of talent. And just because I had a lot of talent, I believe that I could reach any championship fight at any moment, any given moment that I would want. But... I learned the hard way that talent could only take you so far and hard work is hard work is what takes you to championship fights and to those big fights. And I had to learn it early in my career, man. I, I didn't do good in my professional fights. Unfortunately, I injured my, my, um, my body. I broke several bones in my body. I did a comeback after nine years and that comeback didn't go well as good. So I just, I never, never imagined I was going to become a trainer now. And look at me now. Now I'm here guiding my nephews through the right footsteps. And I want them to accomplish whatever I couldn't accomplish in the pros. So that basically uh, made you decide to hang up the gloves and let's become a trainer. Yes, sir. I would see their passion. I mean, I would see their passion in their eyes when they were young boys. I mean, I was still sparring. I would still hit up the boxing gyms and stuff. And, and they would tell me, Tio, Tio, I, I want to do what you're doing. I want to get in there. And we, hasta que yo mi hermano, we decided to give them the opportunity and um, Dios me dio la oportunidad to open my own gym in 2017, mm -hmm. and I did, and um, along came my nephews, I brought them with me in 2017, that's when they started their amateur careers, when they were, I believe, 10, 11, 12 years old. Yes, sir. Gotcha. In this fight, he's fighting Atiles, the 28th of June. You told me that you're going to be more involved in this camp more than before. Uh, can you elaborate more on why you're going to be doing this? Yes, yes. Um, first of all, the Mr. Atiles, he's a fighter out of Houston. I've been, um, I've been scouting him for quite a while. I've been wanting this fight 
uh, several. Um, we've been wanting this fight for a while now. So um, I know he's a he's a undefeated fighter. I know he's a he's a, a fighter that comes forward a lot. He throws a lot of punches. I mean, counting his punches, uh, he averages about 220, 240 punches per round. So he has a lot of output on punches. And I'm talking about from the first all the way to the fourth round, because he's only done four-round fights. And on the fourth round, he's still averaging 240, 230 punches. So you can tell that he has a high output in punches. So just because of that, I know that it's her first six-round fight. Esteban needs, I need, I need Esteban to be on top of his A game. I need his conditioning to be there. I'm, I'm helping him a lot with mitts. Um, his camp is going great. His physical, uh, his, uh, con his uh, strength and conditioning training is going very well as well. Um, Mr. Tigre is also helping us in, uh, in his camp. So we are preparing Esteban early for this fight so he can perform and so he can come out and, and beat this guy Atiles because Atiles is no joke, man. Atiles comes to fight. He's undefeated. And just the punches he averages per round tells you everything, man. I mean, that guy, he's just come for a guy. He throws a lot. And I'm preparing Esteban. I want to, this is one fight that I've been wanting for a long time. And this is one fight that I want my nephew to succeed in. And this is one fight that we are not losing for you guys, for the fans here in the 956. Got you, sir. June 28th, let's, let's just say, you know, comes out victorious. Where do you see him in the next couple of years? Um, I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. I mean, whatever the future brings for, for Esteban, I mean, um, we'll have all the doors and windows open. I mean, I know that if he wins this fight, a lot of doors are going to open for him. Um, his ranking is, is gonna, he's gonna, it's gonna go up a lot. And, um, we're just hoping that we can, we gotta take care of this fight first. We're hoping that we're gonna come out with the win. I'm pretty sure we are. And after this, we're just looking forward to what's next, man. Whatever's next, whatever comes up, whatever opportunities, whatever he has to defend his belt, whatever it is that comes up next, we'll be ready for it. We'll be ready for it. Gotcha. Stevan Ali is undefeated. Uh, John Atilis is undefeated. It should be a hell of a show. Yes, sir, it is. It is. They're going to put on a, a firework show that night. Believe me, Esteban is getting ready. And believe me, Atilis is getting ready as well. Both fighters got noticed early. So both fighters have a lot of time to train. They have about three months to get ready. Esteban already started his camp about two or three weeks back. I mean, I'm sorry. He started his camp about three to four weeks back. He's already been a month into camp. So Esteban is bringing it, man. Esteban is getting ready. I am preparing Esteban. I am going to bring a lot of speed, a lot of power of Esteban. Believe me, guys. I am working a lot. I'm working very hard with Esteban. I am going to bring a lot of punches out of him. He's going to come out to fight. Believe me, we're not going to come out looking for a knockout. We're going to come out with a game plan. We're going to execute that game plan. And then the knockout presents, then we'll go and we'll go execute for that knockout. But um, we're practicing and we're working very hard to put on a great show for you guys. Expect a, a night of fireworks because not only Esteban is fighting that night, also Fabian Diaz and a lot of local talent guys that are undefeated. We'll be facing undefeated fighters that night. So me as a trainer, I'm very motivated to see the 956 fighters here succeed, not only with my nephew Esteban Ali Garza, and also all the fighters from here from the 956. I'm very proud of uh, Fabian Diaz, and I'm very excited for him to see him to, to win, to see him win too as well. Should, so, be, should be a hell of a show, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir, before we conclude here, anybody want to say hi to any shout outs you want to give to anybody? Yes, sir. I want to give a say hi and a shout out to Mr. Noe Mendoza for always supporting Esteban Ali. I also want to give a shout out to Steven Solis, Mr. Cali Soto, El Señor Retis, Suniga Septic Tanks, DND Frights, Starlight, and Estamos Unidos for always supporting Esteban when he, when he gets ready for his fight nights. Sir, looking forward to Esteban's fight in June. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, thank you, Albert, for always interviewing my, my nephew and for always putting on these great interviews for us, the 956 boxing fans, to, to watch. Thank you, Albert. Yes, sir. RGV versus the world. Yes, sir.